Okay, so we continue on with reading James, and we're up to chapter 4, starting at verse 1. And he begins with some quite strong language here, in fact, it's quite uh, powerful. Pothen polymoi kaipothen makai en humin. From whence literally are there wars and battles among you? Sometimes softened in English as quarrels and conflicts, and certainly he's using these metaphorically here, but um, they're, they're quite strong words in Greek. Uk and Chuthen, are they not from there, and he explains where there is, uh, from your, dis, um, your pleasures, from the head and own, from the pleasures which are warring in your members. So he's using uh, lots of metaphors from fighting and, and, and war here. You desire and you do not have. Again, a very strong word for new You commit murder. Again, probably used in a, well, certainly used in a metaphorical sense here. Um, the the um, right, uh, scholars such as Erasmus and then later Calvin and Luther tried to well, they, they read phonete, you are, um, you grudge, rather than um, phonuete here, but there's no um, evidence for a textual variant. So we're meant to see this as, um, in this context of war, and he's using very strong metaphorical language. So you commit murder and you are zealous, uh, or are, sorry, you are jealous, and you are not able, epichukain, well, to get what you want. It's to, to meet with. So you are, are not able to to get what you want. Makeste uh, kai polymete. Now, interestingly here, he used two nouns up here, polymos and make, and now he uses the corresponding verbs, but reverses the order. So he does makes uh, there first and then polymete. So uh, this is called a chiasmus, and again, it's a very literary, te literary technique. And so the writer of this work is obviously quite well well versed in Greek literary technique and rhetorical method. So you fight and you make war, and you do not have dia top plus infinitive. Uh, because you do not ask. So, humas is the subject of the infinitive. And notice he's using itio in the middle here and then back in the active and then back to the middle. Uh, th this again is a literary technique. There's no real difference in meaning between them, but um, Greek writers uh, often liked to do this for the sake of variation. So, you do not have because you do not ask. Uh, and you ask and you do not receive, the oti because you ask kakos badly. You do not ask properly. Hina, so you ask in order that, dapenesity, subjunctive, and the word itself means to spend, um, but here it's often, word, it's often a, perhaps a stronger sense here of you waste or you squander. So you ask in order that you might squander it understood in your pleasures or perhaps on your pleasures. Moi kalides, now this again very strong word, it means adulteresses, it's a feminine word, adulteresses. And again you can see there's been variant readings where um, they've added in adulterers and adulteresses but the manuscript just says adulteresses and again th this may be some sort of reference to the old testament idea of god as the husband of the believer and so the um, believers who go astray are adulteresses uh, do you not know that the love of the world is ekthra now there are two words mustn't confuse here there's ekthra which is a feminine noun, it's abstract, which means hostility. And this ekthros, 
which can either be an adjective or a noun, uh, which means the enemy. But you can have ekthros in the sense of um, hostile. But the ekthra is a abstract noun, hostility. So do you not know that the love of the world is hostility, is the hostility of God? And these may again be defining genitives, so that the love in respect of the world is hostility in respect of God. Um, hos e'an for hos an, you would get in classical Greek, but this, um, this hos e'an is often used in contemporary Greek of this period. So um, hos an, whoever, therefore, Bulethi might wish um, Ani to be a friend of the world. Kathistatai, from kathistami, often used in classical Greek as well, just as a preposition for is. It's sort of is established, is the over translation of it, but you could just say is. Is an ekthros, this is the this word, an enemy of God. Or do you think, Docherti, so again we get the rhetorical question, do you think that Hegrafe, the scripture, always of course referring to the Old Testament when you get Hegrafe, do you think that the scripture uh, speaks kenos in vain, so vainly, uh, emptily, kenos is empty, or do you think that the scripture sp uh, speaks vainly, and this is in the author's mind, presumably a quotation from the Old Testament, but it's actually not. So um, it may be either that the, the writer is reading some version of the Septuagint, which is now lost to us, or perhaps he's misremembering something. Remember in those days that they, they didn't have books like we do now, and certainly no internet. Uh, you had to do things from memory, and he may have misremembered this from somewhere else, thinking it was Old Testament. Anyway, it's pros thonon. Now, pros with the adjective can often be used adverbially. So this could mean jealously. So you get pros organ, angrily, and so on. So uh, pros thonon, jealously. Um, now, this, this next section has two possible meanings. The toponyma might be the subject. So jealously, the spirit which dwells among you Epipothe yearns over understand you. Or you may have to supply hot theos, which is what some scholars do at this point, and say God is the subject of this. Um, so but um, but jealously God, Hotheos, yearns over the spirit, the spirit which dwells among you. Which dwells among you. Um, but he gives greater favour, um, greater joy, uh, but charis is a gift, but he gives a greater gift, not, not joy, sorry, but gift. Dio, wherefore, lege, he says, and now we do get a quotation, this is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, the Septuagint, um, uh, God Anticitai opposes Huperefa, it takes a dative uh, after the auntie, um, the, the haughty. So God opposes the haughty and he, he gives grace, he gives charis to the humble. To the humble, tapenois. Um, Hupotargete is an aorist passive imperative. But the force of it really here is middle. So um, submit, therefore, um, submit yourselves to God. You often use the passive with, um, with a middle sense uh, in, in later Greek. So therefore, submit yourself to God, oppose the devil, literally stand against anti and histami, Oppose the devil and fuxatai, that's the future, it goes into the middle in the future, as any verbs do, and uh, he will flee afhumon from you. Draw near to God, this is from Engizdo. 
Now, very interestingly, we get here a future. This is a future of Engizdo, but it's not the usual future. This is called an Attic future. It's the way in, in Attic dialect, these verbs in idzo and adzo and so on, um, they had a, a rather strange way of forming the future. They, the zeta disappears and um, you get a sigma which drops out plus a linking vowel and you get contraction. And so forms like this, this is typically what happens for these Attic futures of verbs in idzo. And I think this is the only one I've seen in the New Testament here. So it's uh, the, the writer of this has is widely read. He has certainly read Attic literature. He knows the Attic future of, en, of Engizdo. So draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Katharisato, imperative. Make katharos, make clean your keras, your hands. Uh, hamatoloi, uh, probably vocative of sinners. Kai, an imperative. Kai, agnisato, and make holy your cardias, your hearts, you who are dipsukoi, you who are vacillating. Interestingly, there's a, there's a similar verse to this in the, um, the, the uh, Hermas, which is an early Greek write, um, Greek New Testament uh, writing, which didn't get into the New Testament, but there is a sentence in there um, very similar to this one, which is interesting. Um, Telepurity, um, so um, humble yourselves um, and um, so it's it sort of be, make yourselves wretched, in fact, make yourselves wretched. And uh, Penthesity, um, grieve, suffer grief, and Klausati, to weep. This one is from Clio, to weep. And the aorist is eklausa, so they're using the aorist imperative and weep. Now we get meta trepeto, which is an only here in the New Testament. It's quite a poetic word, and it's an imperative here, third person singular imperative. So let your laughter um, turn into penthos, into grief, and your joy into katethia, uh, which is a word meaning gloominess or it's, it, it's to do with being downcast, into downcastness or into gloominess. Tape uh, um, uh, be humbled. So it's humble yourself, be humbled. It's a passive imperative. Be humbled in opion before God and he will exalt, he will lift you up, he will exalt you.